Let me tell you a story of something that you can kind of get an idea of if you are a person that wants to go down that path of using exam dumps, using test questions, doing the easy way, okay? This is why that is very, very dangerous, okay? And this is a story I have not really shared before. So I'm not going to give you the company that this is at or the particular people and call them out, okay? But it was this particular place that when I worked at that really made me as the network engineer that I, I am today. And that is really the truth behind that. Okay, so there was a particular company, it's a company X, and they suffered a layer two event. I think it was a broadcast store. And it brought the network down, it was down. Now keep in mind that this particular company had high requirements of security and reliability. And the network went down. Now this company had two network engineers. I wasn't working at the company at the time, okay? But the network was down. And this, I mean, there's thousands of people at this location. There's critical business that had to be done, but the network was down. So there were a lot of different locations across the US and they were also impacted. It was very, very bad. And so these network engineers, they walked into the data center room. They had no idea what, what was going on. They had like their laptops and they were just like logging in and they had like no idea where to start, like what to do. And management is right there on their neck. Supervisors, managers, the directors, executives were there in the room. They were saying, what can we do, right? And they were confused. They, they didn't know what was going on here. This is bad. And the network was down for four to six hours. And eventually they did some things and the problem was solved, right? But they were just, with their laptop, just they had no idea what to do. Right? They can't call for help. They can't just go to a message board and say, hey, I need some help here. They were just, they, they, they were dumbfounded, I guess. Well, a week later, um, one of those, it was two of them, one of those network engineers was let go. He was fired. Okay. And uh, a few days later, I was called in for an interview, right? Because um, there was a job posting which said we were looking for a CCIE. That is our requirements, no questions asked. Great, I'm a CCIE. Let me apply for this job. So I applied for it. And for the interview, there was no technical people in that interview. It was just me with a whole bunch of managers, directors, and executives, which I found very strange. Like, where's the technical people that's going to give me my technical interview? They literally had textbooks. And one of the questions, this might be an old question, so I apologize. I'm a dinosaur, I apologize. But one of the questions was, what is the default encapsulation for a serial interface on a Cisco router? And I said, oh, that's HDOC. That's old stuff. You probably won't even really know. I don't think that's being taught now in the current CCNA um, curriculum. Um, and they said, yes, that's correct. And I'm thinking, I know they're not asking me CCNA level questions when they said that they're looking for a CCIE. It was very strange. Anyway, so I was hired like the next day, basically, right? They liked the interview, they liked my personality, so good, I was in. But I was as a contractor. All right, so if I don't shape up, I'm let go. So I start this company and I meet the other network engineer because the other one was fired. So now, that weekend, there was a, a, um, a, a, uh, a cutover. So changes to do for the core switch in the data center. So, and I'll be responsible for doing that. And the other network engineer would just kind of just follow my lead. But they brought in a consultant who was just there to supervise, right? Now, I didn't know what that meant. I'm like, okay, I thought they hired me as a network engineer. Why do they have a consultant? I believe that person was there just in case that if that event happened again, 
that person can come in and save the day. And of course, I will probably be let go because I'm not because I'm because I don't know what I'm doing. Okay, that's that's what I, that's what I would assume. Anyway, so we did the cutover that weekend and everything was fine, but it was a simple cutover. So I don't know why there's there was a concern, but I am not aware of what has happened in the past. So because that cutover was hap was very successful, it was very clear to management like okay, so he knows what he's doing, and a few days later they fired the other network engineer. And it was a surprise, like, what's going on here? You know, because I, I really liked that guy. I thought he was really good. He was very knowledgeable. Um, so then that's when management told me what happened. And also, by the way, me being a contractor, I became permanent. So it's very clear that they wanted to test me out, and they did. And once they liked me, then they went ahead and, um, yeah, made it permanent. And that's when they told me about what happened that particular day. That they were down for six hours. They had two network engineers that had no clue what they were doing. Like, they didn't know where to, where to start, how to troubleshoot, nothing like that. Okay? So, I was, I was really, like, surprised by what happened. And it was interesting because, think, like, two months later, there was another Layer 2 event that occurred. It was a broadcast storm and the entire network went down. So the management team were panicking because it was deja vu again. Oh no, this is happening again. But now I'm the network engineer. The only one, because there, there weren't two, it was just me this time. And management is there. I mean, managers, directors, VPs, executives are all there. They're all panicking and I'm like, just relax. Okay, based on what's happening here, it seems to be a broadcast storm and I know how to solve that quickly so then we can investigate why that happened in the first place. So I fixed it within 10 minutes. The broadcast storm was resolved and everything was up again. Less than 10 minutes. So that made management really, really excited and very happy about that. They were like, we made the right decision. And um, they commented that they hired these people because they had some certifications. Um, but wasn't confident that, well, that certification did not seem to equate to them being able to fix or how to troubleshoot. And there it is, right? What I have learned from that experience was, and I saw it from the face of the management team, is if you take the route, the easy route to get certified to become a network engineer, right? So you, you got your CCNA, you're now, you're now a network engineer, you're fantastic, and there's, yeah, you're probably configuring interfaces and VLANs, you're like, yes, I am getting it done. But what happens when that one day happens when the entire network goes down? And if this is a big organization, you're gonna have management on your shoulders. They're not gonna be leaving you alone, okay? Especially if it is a critical network with high security and reliability requirements, they're gonna be on your ass. Okay? They are standing behind you. So you don't have the opportunity of calling your friends and saying, hey, I have no idea what I'm doing, um, how should I troubleshoot this? No, because you got management behind you. You can't go to a support forum and, and ask for help um, because they're going to see that, especially when the network is down in the first place. You're on your own. What you want to do? This is why I really tell people you want to get away from that. Uh, because that means that you're going to come up fast. You're going to be put into a, to a position that you're not ready for. And it was clear that those two engineers, they panicked. There's more to this story I can get into though, because it was like they were really panicking. They were really panicking. Um, it was like a bad experience. Like it was something that would probably give them nightmares for a long time. And this is why I'm saying, I get it, you want to move up fast, but if you're not there yet, you can't make those, those jumps because you will be crucified when it comes to a problem just like this. 
Okay, so let me end this video with this, okay? Um, that was a, a video of this teacher from college. I'll post a link up here if I can find it. I'll put it in the description, by the way. Um, they were talking about cheating and talk about, oh, people think because it messes up the curve and blah, blah, blah. What he said about cheating was, was really this, and I thought it was very, very interesting. What he said was, if you're cheating now for the easy stuff, it's going to make it harder when you get to the harder stuff or when you're on the job with somebody that's not doing what you're doing. So you can't look over and, and copy. And the story that I just gave you is exactly the point that I want to make very clear to you of what could happen. You could be in that situation where you could be like, I don't know what I'm doing. And that could affect you because at least in the Silicon Valley, like in where I live, it's very small. People talk. That's a different, that's a different day. I have friends that were impacted because of what they have done in one company. Okay. Different day, different episode. Okay. And that really, really means something. Okay. Listen, certifications are BS. I got that. Okay. You can become certified, but just say, I'll, I'll be certified. The questions are BS, but let's not look at it as that. Let's just make sure that we are really understanding the concepts. Let's make sure that we understand how to configure, how to troubleshoot. So I'll take the test. I'll go ahead and just make sure I go all, I'll make sure I read everything. I have CCNA books up here. Give me a second. This is one, now this probably was after I got my CCNA, but the, this is one of many books that I read word for word, line. I, I read everything in this book vigorously because I want to know this material very, very well. I want to write commands without even looking at the syntax. I want to memorize the, the syntax. I want to understand when I see, when I type in show IP route, what is all that crap saying? I want to really understand that. Now, over time, I realized, well, some stuff is fluff, so I don't care about learning that, but that's only over time. When you're starting out, you want to master this material. If you want to be a network engineer, you have to make those sacrifices and you have to learn that material. Okay, have that integrity and saying that I'm going to really learn this. I'm going to bust my ass. Um, I want to learn what is my approach. That's what I talked about in another episode about practical learning. You have to have an approach of how did you configure something? How did you troubleshoot something? Have a system of one, two, three, and that you are using that in all your examples. When you're configuring, you're doing it the same way. If you're troubleshooting, you're doing it the same way. You want to take that opportunity of doing all that to give you time to build up that experience so that when you do become a network engineer and you get that particular level of experience, you are more prepared. You're not thrown into the lion's den with a laptop, with management behind you, with you being clueless because you weren't ready to be in that position in the first place. And that is all that I really want to say. Just understand that the value of certifications is not dead, but it's not as strong as it used to be. And that companies are looking more at the practical experience that you have. And that could be challenging. So again, I talked about a lot of things that you can do, your approach. So check out all the videos in the collection for those videos, okay? Because I said a lot of things there and I don't want to be too repetitive. But I want to just make that point very clear. Okay, again, not trying to lecture, not trying to tell you what you need to do. I want you to keep those factors in mind because I'm really giving you my personal experiences of what I have seen and how it has impacted people. It impacted me just hearing that particular story like, wow, you know, that layer two storm happened, they panicked and there's management and it happened again. That means I'm on the spot, I'm being tested now, right? But because of the experience I had in previous companies, it was like, this is nothing. Before I got to that point of being in that one company, my experience before that was, was hardcore. So for me, it was nothing because I, it, it allowed me time to build, to be the network engineer that I am today. 
let the process happen. Take time, be knowledgeable with everything that is required. Okay, that's a long video, which I, again, has, will likely break it out into different episodes so it's not too long and drung out. But just keep all those factors in mind, okay? And uh, if you have any questions about being a network engineer, post that at rodhub.net slash A-N-E. That is important, not the comments. Go to that website to post your questions and to vote on questions that you all are asking about. And thank you for watching this video. And until next time, as always, keep networking.